Hey guys, how are we? Well, just getting into the day here and uh, it's been a couple of days since I've done a video but we've just been so busy. Met with Nick, one of the um, uh, viewers yesterday down in Patea. So uh, we had a good, uh, good chat and uh, yeah, met some really good people. So, interesting times here, it's, um, yeah, lots of storms at the moment, uh, morning and evening, and, and really full on, as I was saying to my brother this morning, um, <laughs> you know, Queenslanders like to uh, big note their supercells as they um, uh, come through in the summer months but uh, I don't think they've got too much on these uh, sort of storms over here, being the tropics. Anyway, uh, I had a few people actually uh, say, why wouldn't you uh, stay in Australia? And, uh, you know, we thought about heading back. We were meant to head back on Wednesday and uh, the wife got sick and we just changed our minds so we'll probably try and extend our uh, visa here. Uh, so basically at this point in time, you can extend your 30 day visa. You don't need a visa when you uh, turn up in Thailand, being an Australian or a Korean, if you're from a, uh, a country with a good uh, passport, you need to check that out on the uh, Thai embassy um, webpage. But you can extend it for another 30 days, and I think it's about uh, 80 Australian or about 65 US uh, to extend it. At this point in time, you probably need insurance, uh, like COVID insurance, but as of the 1st of July, uh, you won't need any insurance and Thai past is pretty much finished. So that's good in that aspect. Uh, but yeah, so why wouldn't we, you know, stay in Australia? My wife absolutely loves Australia and uh, my wife's Korean and thinks everything in Australia is fantastic. But, you know, there's pros and cons, the pros and cons of living in Australia. Um, if you're not Australian, I'll give you a bit of a background. So it's, um, it's a representative form of government with um, the ruling sort of party electing a prime minister. And um, you have the lower house, which is a house of representatives, which are basically people who are elected uh, out of their communities to represent that community in the government. And uh, you also have the upper house, which is the Senate. And um, the Senate basically uh, passes all of the, uh, the, the bills or the laws that the lower house basically um, uh, put forward. I think it's called bicarmalization. I think that's what it's called. Um, anyway, so once that bill is passed by the upper house, it, it's sort of uh, entered into law. And so that's basically how, uh, how it works, but it's really dominated by two parties, the Liberal Party and the Labor Party. Liberal Party is basically for business. It's focused on tight fiscal and economic management. Labor Party is uh, more focused on the rights of workers and more of a socialist bent. Um, the problem with that is that they have been, um, you know, accused of and found wanting in areas of um, a union influence within that um, political party. Now, you can run as an independent if you're an Australian citizen, uh, but, uh, and so you basically can vote on different bills, you know, independently outside of party lines. So the problem I have with this system of government is basically uh, you're seeing policies put in place that are representative of the political party and not uh, beneficial to the electorate. Uh, so anyway, look, all that aside, that's how that works. Um, 
But that does build a sort of stable government and uh, Australia is part of the G20, so uh, it's, a, it's considered to be a developed economy. Uh, and it is, its interest rates are run by the Reserve Bank of Australia. Though, as I've said in previous videos, about 86% of Australian mortgage debt is funded from the international money market, which has made the Reserve Bank of Australia fairly irrelevant. It's an uh, oblique instrument. So inflation at the moment is really running rampant. I have seen lettuce for $11. Uh, I remember being in Australia and seeing uh, grapes for $13, uh, apples for $12. The cost of living there is actually quite exorbitant. Uh, even renting a property is going to cost you $750 a week, uh, upwards of that. It, you know, a decent house, house is probably going to cost you about $1,200 a week. And um, the average wage over there, last time I looked, which was probably about three years ago, was 67500 And, um, you know, education, so they do have a fairly good education in Australia, public education, but it's, it's increasingly progressive and liberal. And if I had kids having to go through a school system, I wouldn't send them to that system. The alternative to that is private schooling, and that's what my brothers do. And uh, that is just horrendously uh, expensive, even if it's slightly subsidised. So you're still looking at, you know, 15 to 20,000 plus a semester, a semester or a year, regardless. It's ridiculously expensive. Um, so I, I genuinely don't know how families survive in Australia. I think they just rack up a lot of debt, to be honest. Uh, house prices in Australia are completely exorbitant. Um, we know from historical data, 500 years of historical data, that house prices should be three to four times the average yearly income. In Australia, they're between 20 and 30, sometimes above that. And so, uh, you know, Average sort of uh, mortgages could be, you know, a lot of money, put it that way. I, I don't know what the average mortgage is. Um, I did see, I don't know, I'm not even going to comment on those figures, but um, I don't know how people survive over there, to be honest. Absolutely insane prices for property. Electricity is ridiculously expensive and... Um, I did see today that the regulator has allowed um, the electricity market to, bit to start up again, but it's not going to help you. I mean, electricity prices over there are just insane. Local government uh, rates, if you own a property, are extremely high. Taxes are really, really high as well. They're some of the highest taxes in the world. And um, even if you do move overseas, you may be subject to uh, tax depending on uh, you know, your situation. So you need to speak to a tax advisor on that. In regards to the environment, Australia predominantly is absolutely stunning. Uh, beautiful environment, uh, pristine in a lot of places. And uh, outside of the big cities, just beautiful and uh, Tasmania sort of comes to mind um, just unbelievable so big uh, benefits there Australia is very much a sporting nation so what are the pros and cons well the pros are you can have a great lifestyle in Australia absolutely beautiful lifestyle um, you know, I did see someone say uh, on, if you type in, you know, pros and cons of living in Australia, someone said, oh, the work-life balance is absolutely perfect. The Australians only work for 38 hours a week and by four o'clock they're packing up and uh, they're off to the beach. And uh, that's just crap. So uh, most Australians don't live like that, unfortunately. Um, I can tell you, having owned businesses and worked uh, in executive positions, no one's doing that. So, um, so yeah, definitely uh, something that I would uh, not uh, take to heart. 
Um, I think the average Australian now is working two jobs and, uh, you know, still falling behind on bills. So, yeah, they work hard. Australians do work hard, they play hard. And, um, uh, and real Australians are pretty straightforward, decent people. There's a few Karens over there. Um, you know, women, not saying women in general, but uh, people who love to stick their nose in other people's business. And uh, that's something that really annoys me about the country. But uh, would I live there? No. If you want to get ahead, and this is a lot of the cons, uh, you're really not going to, um, you're not going to get ahead financially by living in Australia, it's just not gonna happen. Unless you've got a business with a huge amount of turnover, uh, even small businesses, a lot of small businesses, and I know from experience, all they're doing is paying taxes and paying for wages. That's all they're doing. Uh, a lot of small business owners, even nowadays, are literally walking away with below minimum wage. So very hard to do business over there and uh, those that are lucky to you know, strike a good business that uh, makes good money with good turnover and good profit are really laughing. But uh, those that don't, and that's the majority, really struggle. So, uh, so yeah, even, look, lots of regulation in Australia as well, and that's something that, um, that's something that a lot of people don't understand is the amount of government bureaucracy and intrusion into your personal life uh, is absolutely absurd. And it's one of the things that I just could not wait to get away from. Um, you can't just do whatever it is you please. Um, in, a, in, in some aspects that's good because you don't want people putting extensions on their properties, you know, ad lib and you know, doing all sorts of crazy things. But in saying that, you can't put a fence on your property that's above six feet, and there's certain regulations with drainage, and it's just insane. Um, so, you know, there's more red light cameras and speed cameras uh, than, um, than I, uh, you know, care to sort of uh, think of. And the other thing that even doing a um, circumnavigation around Greece when we were in Greece, uh, one of the things that stood out to me was that we weren't pulled over by police at any point in time, even with brand new vehicles. Like we've always had new vehicles in Australia and uh, you're always uh, going to, uh, uh, you know, fall foul of the law, law at some point. So. Uh, that's, look, there's lots of things that make life very difficult in Australia and um, if you're on a property, right, like a farm or something like that and you, you don't spend a lot of time interacting with the rest of the world, um, you know, life there can be pretty good. But if you're not, if you've got to go out and work every day um, and you've got to interact and educate children and go to sporting events and activities. I mean, even that is extremely expensive. Um, lots of regulations and it's just, it's really a, a nation that uh, loved rules and regulation. And not that I'm a complete rule breaker, but I certainly don't want uh, people intruding um, in my life and that sort of thing. In regards to health, um, you know, like Australia is actually pretty good. It's one of the better countries in the world. I mean, my wife being a surgeon, uh, well, a retired surgeon now, um, and Korean. Uh, Koreans have a, um, a saying that in Australia, you go to, um, uh, into the hospital with a paper cut and go out to the morgue. And um, they look at Australian health as being particularly backward. So, I mean, you know, a lot of Asian countries are really advanced and very efficient, but uh, Australians love to think that they've got the best healthcare in the world. It's cheap, and that's the good thing about it, certainly not at American standards, but you'll definitely need health insurance. Um, 
if you haven't taken out health insurance and you get a Medicare levy whacked on your taxes uh, every year. And uh, I think up to 10%. So I pay an extra 10% tax because I refuse to, uh, uh, years ago I refused to get health insurance, but uh, particularly when I'm paying for Medicare on top of it. So, uh, so lots of different things like that to take into consideration. So pros and cons, could be a good lifestyle if you've got lots of cash. Um, the bad thing about it is you know, you're certainly going to need lots of cash. Be very restricted in what you can and can't do, where you can go, what you can say, what you can't say. Um, even with um, rules around social media and online, you just can't say what you please. Uh, you could end up in three years jail if someone takes offense at it. Uh, so certainly a lot more freedom overseas and a lot more opportunity to earn money. Now in regards to earning money, I'm going to put a link in the description below with John uh, Castanani. Um, he's got an affiliate program, highly recommend it. Um, you don't have to sign up to it, but you can certainly uh, follow him and um, he's got some really good ideas, in particular earning online and earning affiliate uh, income online. So. Definitely check that out and um, I might even go through some of his material and um, let you guys have a look. So if you're wanting to set up an online thing, then uh, Affiliate Programs is pretty good and he certainly can teach you some stuff. All right guys, gonna leave that there. If you haven't liked and subscribed to the channel, then do that and um, we'll do another video s real soon. So um, go to Overseas Exiles on Facebook and uh, we'll see you there.